The Battle of Sun Lok was the last major battle of the Vietnam War. From the beginning of 1975, People's Army of Vietnam forces swept through the northern provinces of South Vietnam virtually unopposed. In the Central Highlands, South Vietnam's two corps was completely destroyed, whilst attempting to evacuate to the Mekong Delta region. In the cities of Hue and Da Nang, ARVN units simply dissolved without putting up resistance. The devastating defeats suffered by the Army of the Republic of Vietnam prompted South Vietnam's National Assembly to question President Nguyen Van Thieu's handling of the war, thereby placing him under tremendous pressure to resign. The ARVN committed almost all their remaining mobile forces, especially the 18th Division, under Brigadier General Le Minh Dao, to the defense of the strategic crossroads town of Sun Lok, hoping to stall the Pavan advance. The battle was fought between 9 and 21 April 1975, and ended when the town of Sun Lok was captured by the Pavan 4th Army Corps led by Major General Hoang Kam. This was the ARVN 3 Corps last defensive line east of South Vietnam's capital, Saigon. The line connected the city of Binh Duong, Bian Hoa Air Base, Vong Tau, Long An and the linchpin centered on the strategic town of Sun Lok, where the South Vietnamese Joint General Staff committed the nation's final reserve forces in Saigon's defense. In the last ditch effort to save South Vietnam, Thieu ordered the 18th Infantry Division to hold Sun Lok at all costs. The Pavan 4th Army Corps, on the other hand, was ordered to capture Sun Lok in order to open the gateway to Saigon. During the initial stages of the battle, the 18th Division managed to beat off early attempts by the Pavan to capture the town, forcing Pavan commanders to change their battle plan. However, on 19 April 1975, Dao's forces were ordered to withdraw after Sun Lok was almost completely isolated, with all remaining units badly mauled. This defeat also marked the end of Thieu's political career, as he resigned on 21 April 1975. Once Sun Lok fell on 21 April 1975, the Pavan battled with the last remaining elements of three Corps Armoured Task Force, remnants of the 18th Infantry Division, and depleted Marine, Airborne and Ranger battalions in a fighting retreat that lasted nine days, until they reached Saigon and Pavan Armoured Columns crashed throughout the gates of South Vietnam's Presidential Palace on 30 April 1975, effectively ending the war. Chapter 1 background. In the first half of 1975, the government of the Republic of Vietnam was in deep political turmoil, which reflected the military situation on the battlefield. At least, two assassination attempts specifically targeting President Thieu were foiled. On 23 January an ARVN officer tried to shoot Thieu with his pistol but failed. The officer was subsequently tried by a military court, 208 On 4 April a Republic of Vietnam Air Force pilot Nguyen Than Trung bombed the Independence Palace with his F-5 Tiger. It later turned out that the pilot had been an undercover member of the Viet Cong since 1969, 208 Following those failed assassination attempts, Thieu grew suspicious of his own military commanders, 208 On 2 April the South Vietnamese Senate recommended the formation of a new government with Nguyen Bà Can as the new leader. As a result, Prime Minister Tran Tien Kiem resigned from his position. Thieu, in response to the Senate's recommendations, immediately approved Tran Tien Kiem's resignation and swore in Win Ba Khan as the new Prime Minister, 75 on 4 April while announcing the changes of government on Saigon television, Thieu also ordered the arrest of three army commanders, Major General Pham Van Phu for the loss of Ban Mi Thout, General Pham Kwok Tuan for his failure to hold Na Trang and Lieutenant General Du Kwok Dong for the loss of Phu Long. General Ngo Quang Truong, commander of I Corps, was spared as he was undergoing medical treatment, 63 during a meeting with the Chief of Staff of the United States Army, General Frederick C. Wei and on 3 April, Chiu outlined his strategy to defend South Vietnam, vowing to hold what was left of his country. In his strategy, Thieu decided that Sun Lok would be the center of his country's resistance, together with Tay Ninh and Phan Rang on either side, 59 eventually, the meeting became more intense when Thieu produced a letter written by former U.S. President Richard Nixon, 
which promised military retaliation against North Vietnam if they violated the terms of the Paris Peace Accords. The meeting then concluded with Chiu accusing the United States government of selling out his country the moment they signed the Paris Peace Accords, 208 in contrast, to the situation faced by their opponents in Saigon, the North Vietnamese government were buoyed by the victories achieved by their armies since December 1974. By the 8th of April 1975, the Pavan had captured all of South Vietnam's one and two corps, as well as Phuc Long province. While the South Vietnamese forces were disintegrating all over the country, North Vietnam had two army corps moving towards the last South Vietnamese stronghold at Sun Lok, 372 The Pavan 4th Army Corps, which overran Phuc Long several months earlier, approached Sun Lok from the northeast after they captured Tay Ninh, Vinh Long, and Long Kang. The 3rd Army Corps moved towards Sun Lok from the northwest after they defeated the ARVN in the Central Highlands. 372 Sun Lok was at the crossroads of Highway 1 and Highway 20 and it controlled the eastern approach to the huge military bases at Bian Hoa slash Long Bean and then Saigon, 436. Chapter 2, Order of Battle Chapter 2 Section 1, South Vietnam On 8 April 1975, the ARVN 18th Division was the main unit defending Sun Lok, composed of three infantry regiments, the 43rd, 48th and 52nd. There were also five armored brigades, four regional force battalions, two artillery units equipped with a total of 42 artillery guns, and two companies of the People's Self-Defense Force, 229-30 on 12 April Sun Lok was reinforced with the 1st Airborne Brigade, three armored brigades, the 8th Task Force from the 5th Division and the 33rd Ranger Battalion. Air support came in the form of two Ravnaf divisions, the 5th Air Force Division based at Bian Hoa Air Base, and the 3rd Air Force Division at Tan Sun Newt Air Base. The commander at Sun Lok was Brigadier General Le Minh Dao, 229-30. Chapter 2 Section 2, North Vietnam as the Pavan 4th Army Corps was the first Pavan formation to arrive at Sun Lok, the Pavan Central Military Committee decided that it would lead the assault. The 4th Army Corps fielded three divisions. Those divisions had support from the 71st Anti-Aircraft Regiment, two Combat Engineering Regiments, the 26th Communications Regiment, two Armored Battalions, two Artillery Battalions, and two Long Kang Provincial Infantry Battalions, 112 on the 3rd of April 1975, the 4th Army Corps Command came up with two options for attack, the first option would involve capturing all ARVN outposts in the surrounding areas and isolating the town center in the process, if the opportunity arose. The 4th Army Corps would launch a full frontal assault on the town center to capture all of Sun Lok. In the second option, if ARVN forces in Sun Lok did not have the strength to resist, the 4th Army Corps would strike directly at the town center using infantry units, with armored and artillery units in support, 381. Chapter 3, Prelude In March 1975 as the Pavan 3rd Army Corps attacked Banmeath out in the Central Highlands, the Pavan 4th Army Corps initiated their own operations against South Vietnamese forces in Tay Ninh and Binh Duong, in the southwestern regions of South Vietnam. Unlike in the previous three years, South Vietnamese defenses around Tay Ninh and Vinh Duong were significantly weakened due to a lack of manpower and resources. Even though Tay Ninh and Vinh Duong did not play a significant role in the defensive posture of South Vietnam, large ARVN units made their way into those areas as a result of the early defeats in 1975. Tay Ninh became a refuge for elements of the ARVN 25th Division, four armored brigades and two ranger battalions. Binh Duong hosted the ARVN 5th Division, one ranger battalion and one armored brigade. To stop ARVN units from gathering in Tay Ninh and Binh Duong, and thereby regrouping for further resistance, the North Vietnamese decided to capture those regions, 219 The Pavan 4th Army Corps Command selected Dao Tieng Chon Than as the first target for their operation, as it was the weakest point in the South Vietnamese defensive line in the northwest area. 
South Vietnam maintained four regional force battalions totaling 2,600 soldiers in the area, along with one armored brigade and 10 105mm artillery guns. The military zone of Dao Tien Chon Than was located adjacent to the three provinces of Tay Ninh, Binh Duong, and Binh Long. The task of capturing Dao Tien Chon Than was entrusted to the Pavan 9th Infantry Division, whose strength were bolstered by the 16th Infantry Regiment, the 22nd Armored Battalion, one Artillery Battalion, and one Air Defense Battalion. At 5 o'clock on the 11th of March the 9th Infantry Division commenced its attack on Dao Tien. ARVN artillery positions in Rungnan, Bao Don and Cha La were the primary targets of the 9th Infantry Division on the first day of the attack. Three on the afternoon of the 11th of March ARVN General Win Kang ordered the 345th Armored Squadron to move out from Bao Don to relieve the military zone of Dao Tieng, but they were defeated by the Pavan 16th Infantry Regiment at Suoyong Hung, and forced to retreat to their base. At the same time, ARVN artillery units at Bao Don and Rung Nan were subdued by elements of the 9th Infantry Division, so they were unable to return fire. 102 by the 13th of March, the Pavan was in complete control of the Dao Tieng military zone. After three hours of fighting, the Pavan 9th Infantry Division also captured ARVN positions at Vun Choi, Na Ba Sak, Khao Tao, and Ben Kui. The ARVN 3rd Brigade had planned to retake Dao Tieng using elements of the 5th Division, but Tu ordered them to pull back and defend Truong Mit, Bao Don and Tay Ninh instead. 3 to 5 on the 24th of March, two regiments from the Pavan 9th Infantry Division, in coordination with two provincial infantry battalions from Binh Phuc, attacked Chon Than with full force but were repeatedly driven back from the ARVN defensive lines. On the 31st of March the Pavan 4th Army Corps sent the 273rd Regiment and one artillery battalion equipped with 15 artillery guns to bolster the 9th Infantry Division. Following the arrival of these reinforcements, the Pavan continued their assault on the military zone of Chon Than. South Vietnam responded by deploying the 3rd Armored Brigade to relieve Chon Than, but they were stopped by elements of the 9th Infantry Division along Route 13. 104 to 5 to avoid destruction, all surviving members from the ARVN 31st Ranger Battalion retreated to Bao Don in the east. On the 2nd of April, the Pavan captured Chon Than, they claimed to have killed 2,134 ARVN soldiers, as well as capturing 472, and to have shot down 16 aircraft, 104 to 5 in addition. North Vietnam captured 30 military vehicles and about 1,000 guns of various kinds. With the province of Binh Long firmly in their hands, the Pavan then set their sights on Sung Lok, 104-5. Chapter 4, Battle The Pavan began their Long Kang Binh Tui campaign with strong attacks against ARVN positions on the two principal lines of communication in the region, highways 1 and 20, striking outposts, towns, bridges and culverts north and east of Sung Lok. On the 17th of March, the Pavan 209th Infantry Regiment, and the 210th Artillery Regiment, 7th Division, opened what was to become the Battle of Sung Lok. The 209th struck first at Ding Quan, north of Sung Lok, and at the La Na Bridge, west of Ding Quan. Eight tanks supported the initial assault on Ding Quan and Pavan artillery fire destroyed four 155mm howitzers supporting the RF. Anticipating the attack, Dao had reinforced the La Na bridge the day before, but the intense fire forced a withdrawal from the bridge. After repeated assaults, the 209th Infantry penetrated Ding Quan and the 2nd Battalion, 43rd Infantry, as well as the RF battalion were forced to withdraw with heavy losses on the 18th of March. 167 also on the 17th of March, the 3rd battalion, 43rd regiment killed 10 Pavan in heavy fighting northwest of Hawaii Duk. At the same time another outpost of Sun Lok district, Ong Don, defended by an RF company and an artillery platoon, came under artillery and infantry attack. The Pavan assault was repulsed with heavy losses on both sides, and another RF company, sent to reinforce, ran into strong resistance on Highway 1 west of Ong Don. North of Ong Don, Gia Ray on Route 333, 
was under attack by the Paven 274th Infantry Regiment, 6th Division. The 18th Division headquarters therefore realized that two Paven divisions, the 6th and the 7th, were committed in Long Kang. While the battle raged at Jia Rei, another post on Highway 1 west of Ong Don came under attack. Meanwhile, a bridge and a culvert on Highway 1 on each side of the Route 332 junction were blown up by Paven sappers. Thus, all ARVN forces east of Route 332 were isolated from Sun Lok by formidable obstacles and Paven roadblocks. North from Sun Lok on Route 20, hamlets along the road were occupied to varying degrees by Paven soldiers, and the RF outpost far to the northeast near the Lam Dong boundary was overrun. Dao decided to counterattack up Route 20 with his 52nd Regiment, minus one battalion but reinforced with the 5th Armored Cavalry Squadron from Tainin Province. The regiment was ordered to clear the road as far as Ding Quan, but the attack quickly stalled as it met heavy resistance well short of its objective, 167 to 9 evidence of increasingly heavy paven commitments in Long Kang flowed into three corps headquarters in Bian Hoa. The Paven 141st Regiment, 7th Infantry Division had apparently participated in the attack on Ding Quan. Hawaii Duk was overrun by the Paven 812th Regiment, 6th Infantry Division, while that division's other two regiments, the 33rd and 274th, seized Jia Rei. The ARVN outpost on the conical peak of Chua Chan, standing 2,200 feet above Sun Lok and providing excellent observation, also fell to Paven 6th Infantry Division forces and Sun Lok itself began to receive artillery fire, including 105mm fire. Three Corps Commander Lieutenant General Win Van Toen responded to the burgeoning threat on his eastern flank first by sending the 5th Armored Cavalry Squadron and then one battalion of the 48th Regiment from Tainin to Long Kang, 169 the rest of the 48th Regiment, was still heavily engaged near Godao Ha. The 3rd Battalion made contact with a Paven company west of the Vam Company Dong River on 17 March, killed 36, and captured a number of weapons, 169 on the 26th of March Toe and sent the headquarters and two battalions of the 48th Regiment to reinforce Kiem Hun, 169 after capturing all key objectives, surrounding Sun Lok in Long Kang Province, the Paven 4th Army Corps spent four days preparing for the final push against the ARVN 18th Division. Paven Major General Hoang Kam personally took control of the operation, he decided to launch a full frontal assault on Sun Lok using his infantry, tank and artillery units from the north and northwest. Colonel Bui Ket Vu, deputy commander of the 4th Army Corps, would direct operations from the east, 168 while the Paven were closing in on Sun Lok, Dao and the chief of Long Kang province, Colonel Win Van Pho, were also busy lining up their units in anticipation of the Paven onslaught. Prior to the battle, Dao told foreign media that, I am determined to hold Sun Lok. I don't care how many divisions the communist will send against me, I will smash them all. The world shall see the strength and skill of the Army of the Republic of Vietnam, 228-9 on 1 April, Toan returned the headquarters and two battalions of the 48th Regiment, to the 18th Division. The regiment moved to the Sun Lok area but sent its 2nd Battalion to Ham Tan District on the coast of Bintui Province to secure the city and port. Large numbers of refugees poured into the province from the north. About 500 troops, survivors of the ARVN 2nd Division, were among those arriving from I Corps. When reorganized and re-equipped, they would take over the security mission in Ham Tan. The 52nd Regiment meanwhile was pressing forward on Route 20 south of Ding Quan and in sharp fighting on 1 April killed over 50 Paven troops. The 43rd Regiment was fighting east along Highway 1, near Sun Lok and in contact with a major Paven force, 172 after the first Paven attempt to seize Sun Lok had been repulsed, the Paven began a second assault on the town. At 5.40 on 9 April 1975, the Paven 4th Army Corps began bombarding South Vietnamese positions around Sun Lok firing about 4,000 rounds, in one of the heaviest artillery bombardments of the war. North of the town, 
The Paven 341st Infantry Division captured the ARVN communications center and the local police station after more than an hour of heavy fighting. However, all Paven units moving down from the north were forced to stop when elements of the ARVN 52nd Task Force counterattacked from the south. From the east, the Paven 7th Infantry Division advanced on ARVN positions without tank support, so they sustained heavy casualties in the initial stages of the fighting. At 8 o'clock the 4th Army Corps Command sent eight tanks to support the 7th Infantry Division, but three were destroyed by entrenched ARVN soldiers at Bao Chan A. By midday, the Paven 209th and 270th Infantry Regiments captured the 18th Division headquarters and the Governor's residence, which was defended by the ARVN 43rd and 48th Infantry Regiments, setting ablaze seven ARVN tanks in the process. In the south, the Paven 6th Infantry Division attacked ARVN positions on Highway 1 from Hung Nia to Mi Bong Con, where they destroyed 11 tanks from the ARVN 322nd Armored Brigade, 382 throughout the day on 9 April, the 18th Division staged counterattacks on the Paven flanks to slow down their momentum, especially movements from the north and northwest, 172 the Paven resumed the attack on 10 April this time committing the 165th Regiment of the 7th Infantry Division along with regiments of the 6th and 341st Divisions, again the attack failed. West of Sun Lok, between Trang Bom and the intersection of Highways 1 and 20, the ARVN 322nd Task Force and 1st Airborne Brigade were trying to force their way east against if resistance. The Paven attacked the rear base of the 52nd Regiment on Route 20, the 43rd Infantry in Sun Lok and the 82nd Ranger Battalion on the 11th of April, the third day of the battle. At that time the battalion of the 48th Regiment securing Ham Tan went back to Sun Lok and the 1st Airborne Brigade moved in closer to the town. Task Force 322, was making very slow progress opening the road from Trang Bom to Sun Lok and Toan ordered Task Force 315 from Ku Chi to reinforce it. On 12 April the battalions of the 52nd Regiment, were still engaged in heavy fighting north of Sun Lok, but the town, although demolished, was still held by the 43rd Regiment, 135 Paven losses to that point were probably in excess of 800 killed, 5 captured, 300 weapons captured and 11 T-54 tanks destroyed. ARVN casualties had been moderate. Most of the 43rd Regiment was holding east of the town, the 48th was southwest, the 1st Airborne Brigade was south but moving north toward the 82nd Ranger Battalion, and the 322 Task Force was en route 1 west of the Route 20 junction attacking toward Sun Lok. Two resupply missions were flown into the besieged town, on 12 April CH-47 helicopters brought in 93 tons of artillery ammunition and followed with 100 tons the next day. Meanwhile, run of airplanes flying against intense anti-aircraft fire, took a heavy toll of the Paven divisions around Sun Lok flying over 200 sorties. At 1400 hours on 12 April run of C-130 Hercules dropped two BLU-82 fuel air explosive bombs on Paven positions in the town of Sun Vin, close to Sun Lok, killing about 200 Paven soldiers, 384 The Joint General Staff made the decision to bolster the defences at Sun Lok with units drawn from the General Reserve. Subsequently, the ARVN 1st Airborne Brigade arrived at the Baoding Rubber Plantation, while two Marine battalions defended the eastern corridor leading to Bianhoa. In addition, Tan Fong and Dao Yai received reinforcements from the 33rd Ranger Battalion, 8th Battalion, 5th Division, 8th Artillery Battalion and three armored brigades. As the reinforcements were making their way onto the battlefield, run of fighter bombers from Vian Hoa and Tan Sun Nyut flew between 80 and 120 combat sorties per day to support the defenders at Sun Lok, 136-7, 173-7 On 13 April Lieutenant General Tran Van Tre, arrived at the headquarters of the 4th Army Corps. During the meeting with other commanders, Tran Van Tre decided to alter certain aspects of the attack, the 6th Infantry Division and elements of the 341st Infantry Division would attack Dao Yai, which was the weakest point in the defensive line around Sun Lok, 
set up blocking positions along Highway 2 leading to Ba Ria Vung Tau, and along Highway 1 between Sun Lok and Bian Hoa, 138-9 on the same day. The Pavan 2nd Army Corps ordered the 95B Infantry Regiment to join the 4th Army Corps in its efforts to capture Sun Lok. As Pavan commanders began to implement their new strategy, the South Vietnamese military declared it had successfully repulsed the communist attack on Sun Lok, thereby ending a period of continuous defeats. Tio, buoyed by the fierce resistance of his army at Sun Lok, announced that the ARVN had recovered its fighting ability to defend the country, 138-9 the new attack began at 4.50 against the headquarters and 1st Battalion, 43rd Regiment, and lasted until 9.30. When the Paven withdrew, they left 235 dead and about 30 weapons on the field. The attack picked up again at midday and lasted until 1500 hours, but the 43rd, with heavy run of support, held. Meanwhile, the 1st Airborne Brigade continued to attack north towards Sun Lok and Task Force 322, now reinforced by the 315th and 316th Task Forces, struck from the west. Runoff observers had discovered two batteries of 130mm guns northeast of Sun Lok and attacked them. The Paven continued sending additional forces into three corps with the 320B and 325th divisions moving to Long Kang where they entered the battle on 15 April. 173-7 On 15 April the situation on the battlefield began to change as Paven artillery stopped at their shelling of Sun Lok, but started pounding Bian Hoa Air Base instead. In just one day, the run of 3rd Air Force Division at Bian Hoa was forced to cease all operations due to continuous Paven artillery bombardments. To continue their support of ground troops at Sun Lok, the Runaf mobilized the 4th Air Force Division based at Bintui Air Base to conduct further missions, 181 on the same day, an artillery bombardment of 1,000 rounds fell on the headquarters and 3rd Battalion, 52nd Regiment, an artillery battalion, and elements of the 5th Armored Cavalry Squadron, 4 155mm and 8 105mm howitzers were destroyed, and the Paven 6th Infantry Division, and the 95B Infantry Regiment defeated a combined ARVN. Formation which included the 52nd Task Force and the 13th Armored Squadron west of Sun Lok. On 16 and the 17th of April, the Paven 6th Infantry Division, and the 95B Infantry Regiment defeated the ARVN 8th Task Force and 3rd Armored Brigade, when the ARVN tried to recapture the military zone of Dao Yai. Around Sun Lok the ARVN 43rd and 48th Infantry Regiments, as well as the 1st Airborne Brigade, suffered heavy casualties as Paven infantry units attacked them from all sides 181 the armored task forces on Route 1 had to pull back, half of their equipment had been destroyed. The 1st Airborne Brigade, frustrated in its attack towards Sun Lok, withdrew through the plantations and jungles toward Ba Ria in Phuc Thuy province, 173-7 with Dao Yai and all the main roads under Paven control, Sun Lok was completely isolated, the 18th Division was cut off from reinforcements and surrounded by the Paven 4th Army Corps. On 19 April the Joint General Staff ordered Dao to evacuate the 18th Division and other support units from Sun Lok to a new defensive line formed east of Bian Hoa at the town of Trang Bom which was defended by the remnants of the division, the 468th Marine Brigade and the reconstituted 258th Marine Brigade. 465-392-3 on 20 April under the cover of heavy rain, South Vietnamese, soldiers and civilians began pulling out from Sun Lok, in a convoy of about 200 military vehicles. On 21 April Sun Lok was completely abandoned, with the ARVN 1st Airborne Brigade being the last unit to be evacuated from the area. At 4 o'clock on 21 April the 3rd Battalion, 1st Airborne Brigade was completely destroyed by the Paven at the hamlet of Swoy Ca. By the end of the day Sun Lok was under North Vietnamese control and the gateway to Saigon was open, 392-181-2. Chapter 5, Aftermath Chapter 5 Section 1, Military Outcome Following their costly victory at Sun Lok, 
the PAVE effectively controlled two-thirds of South Vietnam's territory. The loss of Sung Ork dealt a severe blow to the military strength of South Vietnam, which had lost almost every unit from its general reserve. On 18 April 1975, Three Corps Commander Toan, informed Thieu that the South Vietnamese forces at Sung Lok had been beaten and South Vietnam's armed forces could only hold out for a few more days as a result of their losses on the battlefield, 99 according to North Vietnam's official account of the battle, about 2,036 South Vietnamese soldiers were either killed or wounded and another 2,731 were captured, 392 total casualties on the North Vietnamese side are unknown but the 4th Army Corps alone claimed to have suffered 460 killed in action, and another 1,428 wounded, 369 while Dao claimed that the battle cost the Paven over 50,000 killed and 370 tanks destroyed. American estimates only put Paven casualties at around 10% of those figures with 5,000 troops killed or wounded and 37 tanks destroyed, 132. Chapter 5 Section 2 political outcome. In the days following the loss of Sun Lok, there was still much debate in both houses of South Vietnam's National Assembly about the country's wartime policies. Pro-war elements in the National Assembly argued South Vietnam should fight until the very end, in the belief that the United States would eventually give the country the necessary aid to resist the North Vietnamese, 66 anti-war elements, on the other hand, strongly opposed the idea. They believed the government should negotiate with the North Vietnamese, in order to avoid a catastrophic defeat. Despite their differences of opinion, members in both houses of South Vietnam's National Assembly agreed that Thieu should be held responsible for the country's dire military and political situation, because his policies had allowed the North Vietnamese to easily penetrate South Vietnam's military defenses, 66 finally at 20 hundred hours on 21 April 1975. Thieu officially resigned as the President of the Republic of Vietnam upon learning that Sun Lok had fallen that morning. In his final effort to save South Vietnam, Thieu gambled his political career by sending the last units of the ARVN to Sun Lok in an attempt to hold off the Paven, 66 ultimately, however, Thieu's effort came too late. Tran Van Hong was appointed President, and he was ordered by the National Assembly to seek a negotiated peace with North Vietnam at any cost, to the disappointment of many in South Vietnam's political elite, who argued that the situation could have been different if Cho had gone earlier, 241 to 2.